Welcome to Family Focus, a program produced by Family Service Association. Thanks for tuning in. I'm your host, Mike Moran. We're delighted to have you uh, be a part of our audience and to join us for this edition of the program. And we're very happy to introduce a guest who is uh, returning to our program after having made a couple of appearances over the years. Uh, we were just trying to figure out when the last time Sharon LaFleur was with us. Uh, and it was uh, probably within the past year. She returns today. We'll give Sharon an appropriate introduction. She is the Director of Children's Behavioral Health Services for Family Service Association. And we welcome Sharon back to the program. Thanks for being here. Thank you. I'm you, very uh, happy to be here. In your role, you uh, oversee three of our I do. programs. And uh, what do you do with your spare time? Take care of my daughter. <laughs> yeah, well, that, there you are. <laughs> Enjoy we can her. talk about her. We should bring her on the yeah, program. So maybe we will that. someday. <laughs> um, no, you, and I mentioned that you do oversee three programs, yes. Sharon, because um, they are, they, they keep you extremely busy. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of staff that are out working in the community, but we're going to concentrate on one of those programs in the, uh, under the umbrella of Children's Behavioral Health Services, and that is, and, and follow us on this, folks, because um, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts has a tendency to assign names to programs mm -hmm. and to situations and circumstances mm -hmm. that aren't necessarily always a, a, a great fit. We're going to talk about a program, but the title of it is, as you know, Community Service Agency. Right. Um, let's give a little bit of background on how that came to be, but before we get there, let's talk a little bit about your career, because um, I remember the last time you were with us, you gave us a little sort of biographical sketch of how you came to family service, and it's an interesting journey, mm -hmm. so t tell us a little bit sure. about that. Um, I grew up in Connecticut, actually, ended up going to college at um, Northeastern, um, and my undergraduate degree was in criminal justice. I was very much interested in the world of justice, justice for underserved, underprivileged. I thought perhaps that was the route I would go. So your heart was on your sleeve. It was. From a, from it a was very, very young age. early age. Yeah. And um, upon graduation, I had a wonderful position working with the district attorney's office in Suffolk County as a victim witness advocate. And that really is to help guide witnesses as they're going through a court procedure, mm -hmm. uh, testifying, um, really some really challenging parts of our system, especially if it's children, and that's who I mainly worked sure. with. Um, and then from that, I really, um, I found it very difficult to kind of be in just that moment with a child when they're going through something so difficult. I wanted to be more on the healing end of their journey. Sure. Uh, so I made a decision to go back to school and get my master's in social work. Mm -hmm. And upon graduation from that is when I joined, uh, I did several years of um, clinical work as a trauma therapist, um, and then I joined Family Services as a supervisor mm -hmm. um, over 20 years ago now, wow. 21 years ago. Yeah, I'd like, you mentioned trauma, and, and it seems as though while it's certainly not a new subject to you, as mm. you just mentioned, the field of social service and healthcare um, seems to have a renewed emphasis on what is frequently referred to as trauma-informed care. Correct, we yeah. have done uh, some staff training on that mm -hmm. subject. We have some staff who conduct training on that subject. Can you talk? I know it's a little bit off our sure. main, uh, you know, topic, but I, it, it seems to be something. I had a conversation earlier today with someone at another agency, and they brought it up immediately. Mm -hmm. How many of the people that work, work in the field of healthcare and social service um, are dealing with people who've experienced trauma, psychological trauma, mm -hmm. uh, that's resulted in. Um, behavioral health issues and sort of overall health issues. Can you just touch on that a little bit? Because obviously it's something that connected with right. you at an early time in your career. Mm -hmm. I think it's really, you know, a guiding force for working with children and families to understand um, that their roads may have been complicated by trauma, by events that really were beyond their ability to cope with. Right. It might not be the reason they're presenting in front of you, but you always have to pay attention to the impact of those experiences on them. And really just um, kind of be interested in learning more about them and then guiding interventions, understanding that there might be triggers, that there might be reactivity, um, that, you know, their response may be 
unexpected to what we would see, but it is expected understanding what they've been through. Right, in the context yeah. of the trauma that they've experienced yep. in their life. And, and when we say trauma, what are the kinds of experiences that we're talking about? The obvious ones that may come to mind, abuse, neglect. Mm -hmm. um, it can, it's really any experience that is so overwhelming, it's outside of your present skills to cope with. So it could be a serious accident, the loss of a parent, sure. um, a transition um, you know, to a different school that you weren't expecting. It really can cover, it really is about your internal capacity to manage that. And when it falls outside of that, um, it gets stuck. And then it's really about finding navigation tools to mm -hmm. incorporate and better manage those feelings connected. You know to what it. you're saying springs a thought to mind that, and you know a great deal about this in one of your other programs, um, the trauma associated with those who were relocated to our area here mm -hmm, in southeastern right. Massachusetts yes. following a hurricane in yes. Port Puerto Rico. Yes. And um, the cultural changes, mm -hmm. the loss of home. The loss, loss of, of home. Yeah. Being in a place with a different climate where yep. you're just your, your physical yes. environment is different. So a lot of organizations, including our own, uh, sort of went to bat Mobilized. for a number of those yep. folks and discovered that, yeah, there was a great deal of trauma associated Absolutely, with that. Absolutely, yep. yeah. And then, of course, um, you know, those veterans, um, people involved in service, have experienced quite sure. significant sure. traumas. Right. And, and as and you know, I work with uh, police officers. Yes, absolutely. And yep. obviously the trauma that they experience um, on a regular basis is something that takes its toll on an individual absolutely. and on the individual's family, not mm -hmm. only in terms of a singular event, but over the course of a career, right. as I'm sure yep. you can imagine. Well, let's talk about the community service agency. Sure. Um, and give us a little background on how it is that that program and others that um, are exactly the same in, in other parts of the state came to be. Sure, it's really a you know great um, story of uh, a group of parents' ability to mobilize and um, advocate advocate on behalf of their children. So mm -hmm. it was a group of parents in Massachusetts um, who filed a lawsuit against Mass Health. And the lawsuits claims were that um, children who didn't have access to community-based services, to care coordination, and to screenings by their primary care physician. This was back in the early 2000s. Um, and during that time, Massachusetts has always had wonderful professional services, but they really were removing kids from their community in order to provide those services. So um, this- and, and in so doing, how, how, when you say removing, kids from their community into residential facilities I into see. hospitals into dys for those that's who had behavioral health issues significant behavioral yeah. health issues right, right. yeah so that's where you know good treatment occurred and help uh, was given but their transitions back home were not planful and were not um, successful and so again the lawsuit was filed it went to trial the plaintiffs won the lawsuit and rather than a financial settlement, um, the settlement was what's considered now the remedy, and that is the Children's Behavior um, Health Initiative. And that was providing Massachusetts with six new services for children to address mental health needs. And the foundation is the community service agencies. Um, there are an awful lot of people that will be watching this program right now who are familiar with children's issues, um, behavioral health issues, profound behavioral mm -hmm. health issues, yet it may be quite foreign to others who are watching mm -hmm. us who might say, you know, kids, really? Serious mental mm -hmm. health issues? They may not understand how, how that can, can be, yet mental illness and uh, serious emotional disturbance, which is yep. kind of a category that the sure. state refers to, as you well know, um, really knows no age. Correct. Yep. Yeah. Depression, anxiety, um, adjustment disorders, all those occur with children and again they're sometimes limited by their capacity to cope with those things and need a lot of um, additional support to, to, to learn in a school setting, to function sure. well in their family, to be part of the community. Yeah. And an, an adult may be in a circumstance where they can say, you know, I I'm experiencing these symptoms and I know it and I know I need to seek help mm -hmm. and I'm going to pursue that. I don't want to lessen the significance of that because that's a major step for anyone to do at any age. 
but maybe uh, children don't necessarily have that capacity to sort of think things through that way and maybe some of their issues and challenges play out with you know acting out behaviors they and do. other kinds yeah. of things yeah and you know the the hope is um, good adults around them, caregivers, parents, coaches, teachers, recognize those things right. and seek supports for them. Right. Again, I think back prior to the lawsuit, the supports were limited in the community. Right. Um, there were no evening appointments. There were no weekend availability. Um, parents had to have transportation in order to Get, obtain the services. So a lot of that is what the lawsuit tried to address. And, and in addressing it, it, and I'm going to use a cliche here, but there were children and families whose issues were falling through the cracks. Correct. Um, and the Children's Behavioral Health Initiative was the way in which the Commonwealth of Massachusetts sought to address that. Yes. In, in a direct way. Yeah. So, so is born the Community Service mm -hmm. Agency. So now we're going to find out just exactly what that is right. and how is it differentiated from the other five services that you mentioned that sure. were part of this initiative. So we actually provide two of those services. We provide intensive care coordination and family support and training. And um, what a community service agency provides is a process by which to deliver services to families who have children with mental health needs and that's called wraparound. And it really is a model uh, that is strength-based. It puts um, caregivers back in the driver's seat for planning for their child. Their experiences are valued. Um, their input and in decision-making is um, first and foremost and prioritized. Um, and it really is about bringing all providers around one table, um, making sure that everyone's in agreement with goals that are being addressed, the way in which um, the planning is moving forward, and we do that through a care planning process. That wraparound process was considered at the time that it began, and by the way, put a timestamp on when these new services in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts we, began. We opened the door July of 2009. Okay. Yeah. And, so and 10 years. And I, and I want to get to after the break how it is that Family Service Association got to be involved in this, because mm -hmm. it didn't happen by accident. Yeah. No one knows this more than you do. Yeah. Um, but that wraparound concept, some might say, well, when it comes to your physical health, you know, you go to the doctor, they're the professional, a nurse practitioner, the healthcare providers, I'm just going to listen to what they say because they're the experts. But I think that's even being challenged it now, is, though. It, it is. is. It, it, exactly yes, the we point. We should have that, a stake in our, our well-being and right, our care. Right. Yeah. And, and, yeah. And, and I think more and more, and I just use my own sort of regular routine doctor visits as an example, not only is there a greater understanding and emphasis on, on behavioral health, mm -hmm. mental health, yep. but there's also doctors want to hear from you. What right. are you experiencing? What's going on in your life that will help me to treat yes. you yeah. if there is something that is treatable? I, I'm oversimplifying it perhaps, but is the wraparound process sort of like that where all the stakeholders get together? And yes, so it's a very holistic model. We kind of want to bring everyone together. We're going to brainstorm ideas as a team. You know, no one has a bad idea. Let's put it all on the table and then we'll break it down and see what's going to work for this family. Hear from them what they want to prioritize as a goal for mm -hmm. themselves. And by doing that, you um, eliminate that silo effect that, you know, and that's what parents used to experience. They maybe had treatment with individual therapist, and then there may have been a school plan going on, but there was no interfacing no and communication. No care coordination, yes. as, as you said. And so parents were often left um, being given advice by one person to try this, right. and then maybe count contradicting that with another person yeah. and so it was very difficult to feel like they were it's moving It's a fascinating forward. process. I want to explore it further and talk about how families in our region can get involved in the program mm -hmm. if they are hearing something in your comments that trigger a, a level of familiarity sure. that they might want to yep. know more. In the meantime we will take a short time out. You're watching Family Focus and we will uh, be back after a 60 second message. Please stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Carol Nagel, President and CEO of Family Service Association. A lot has changed since the day when our agency began its long journey of providing services to our community. In the beginning, our mission was a simple one, to provide caring and helpful services 
designed to improve the lives of the individuals and families who live and work here. And while the programs we provide have changed over the years, and the problems facing the community have become more challenging, Family Service is still here, 125 years later, to answer the call. As we look to the future, we'll continue to work together with our many community partners and to find new and better ways to bring our services to those who need them. Whether it's providing a warm, welcoming learning environment for preschool children, offering professional counseling, or helping elders maintain their good health and independence, Family Service remains committed to the spirit of that very same mission of service that guided us when we took those few steps in 1888. Please visit our website and learn more about our agency, its programs, and our long history of service to the community. Welcome back and thank you so much for watching Family Focus. This program is produced by Family Service Association and is seen on right now 14 different um, public access cable television stations all throughout southeastern Massachusetts. And we're also available uh, on our Facebook page. You can link to uh, our program and also on our own very own YouTube channel. So uh, seek it out, Family Focus. And uh, if you go on YouTube, put in FSA, Fall River, Family Service Association, Fall River, and you'll find a whole series of programs, including this very one. Let's reintroduce our guest. We are really happy to have Sharon LaFleur join us uh, again on the program, uh, uh, return appearance. And she is the Director of Children's Behavioral Health Services for Family Service Association. And we're talking about one of the programs and its various components, the Community Service Agency. Sharon, once again, thanks for being with us. Thank you. Um, we we're talking about the wraparound process and mm -hmm. all of the, 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 the client voice that comes right. to be part of the, uh, what would it be called, the treatment plan as we're trying care to plan find a care we, plan yeah. for uh, a child who is experiencing um, uh, behavioral health issues, mm -hmm. serious emotional mm -hmm. uh, problems. What is the age, ra age range of the children that you um, work with? Up to their 19th birthday. Okay. And as young as? Uh, at birth, yeah. Really? Yeah, really? they need to meet medical necessity criteria, so it does require that they have a diagnosis. Um, we have clinicians <laughs> as supervisors on our, on our staff, and they can provide the diagnosis if, right. if needed. Right. And, what, and what are the kinds of things that we might learn of in terms of di diagnosis. Um, I think you might have mentioned some of the conditions a little bit earlier, depression or anxiety, uh, those, those kinds of things. Post-traumatic stress disorder, mm -hmm. really, you know, um, eight attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. What, you know, what we can assist with if a child is having some challenges in any of the life domain, school, community, home, um, we can bring a team together to help to make things better for their family, for the family to reach the vision of what they want their family life to be like. And, and what typically, if, if there is a, I'm sure there are many answers, but if there is sort of a, a typical answer to the question, where would you like your, your child and your family to be? Is it, well, I just want things to return to normal? I mean, wh however one defines that. What are the things that your client families tell you? It's really kind of, we really try to get them to have a future vision of, you know, if right. everything could be where they would expect their family to be and would everyone would be happy I and content. I want them to do well in school. What does that look I like? I want him or her to yes. interact um, positively yes. and, uh, with, with other children. Yep. I want them, I want him to uh, have fewer meltdowns, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, yep. that's it's not really a things. clinical term, but yep. it's something that any parent or grandparent yep. can tell you. Right. Uh, occurs. Uh, and so hearing those kinds of desires expressed, um, take us through the process. If you will. So the two roles that are involved in the community service agency are intensive care coordinator and that's really the person who's kind of facilitating that wraparound process via a team. Mm -hmm. um, so they will work with um, all team members including the caregiver to ensure that we're all on the same page as we're walking through this process. And then the other really important and very valuable piece is the family partner. Um, all of our family partners have lived experience raising a child with mental health needs or serious medical needs. Oh, so they bring a, 
a real personal Absolutely. awareness yes. to, the, to the process. Yes, and they're really at um, a point in their life where they've, their battles are mostly won. You know, life doesn't stand still, so there are still challenges that come, but they're at a place they want to assist other families sure. with what they've learned and sure. how they've navigated um, systems and challenges. And they work with the caregiver, and it really is about skill building for the caregiver. We want to provide them with tools to better manage their child's mental health. What are some of those tools? How to communicate with your providers. Um, often we find that caregivers um, are intimidated to talk to their child psychiatrist or struggle to say that they are not feeling comfortable with certain interventions that are they're being asked to do. So that's a huge piece is to um, build their confidence to communicate effectively with all team members. Right. How to navigate child serving systems, how to use DTA, how to interface with Department of Children and Families if that's something that you're you know experiencing. Where do your referrals come from? Where? Um, probably the majority of our referrals are self-referrals now by families. Uh, the Department of Children and Families is also a huge um, referral source for us. Um, various providers uh, in the community. Um, we can take referrals from anywhere. Right, other agencies, yep. um, the school yep. systems Schools, themselves. Yep. Um, who qualifies? In other words, are there other qualification criteria for the child and family to enter your program as opposed to seeking to access some other category of service in the so community? We really are looking at there's a need for care coordination. So you really, you know, um, th there should be a situation where there's a need to bring a team around a youth that the difficulties are being impacted in more than one life domain. Right. Um, and then the other criteria is really that um, the child is under 18. They do need to have ma mass health, either standard or common health as their um, program. And um, we do need to have a diagnosis for the child. So again, they can come in, in coming with a diagnosis from one of their providers, or we can meet with them and determine if there is a, a diagnosis. How many, excuse me, how many different community service agencies are there throughout the Commonwealth? So as part of the lawsuit, they were established in um, 32 sites. They're in every um, region where there is a DCF office, a Department of Children I and see. Families office. So there's um, 32. Is that where the, the primary funding for the program comes? Because a lot of state funded programs come through various departments. No, no, it's um, a Mass Health funded program. It's Mass Health yep. funded. So Mass Health being um, uh, the Medicaid, Medicaid yeah. insurance. It's like an insurance product. Right, you right, would I see. Um, Although as of July 1st, which is very significant, um, commercial insurances are now required depending on their their value in fully funded, federally funded, uh, required to um, provide ICC services, so provide the care coordination services, um, and then next July the family partner services is, will come online. Is that a big step? It is a big step. Because it is a big it step. would seem to be logically that it would increase the potential pool of mm -hmm. people who can take advantage of them. People, when they hear about any kind of a program in the social service field and the medical field, social service in particular, may say, well, what are we, what are we getting for this? What is it preventative? Does it save us dollars in the long run that we, that we would otherwise be spending mm -hmm. in other areas? Because if, and I don't want to answer my own question, I want you to, but I'm thinking if the children are having issues that are being dealt with successfully at a younger age, they're going to be involved less with law enforcement, less mm -hmm. with criminal justice. Right. So can you talk about that a little bit, just yeah, what you I, see as I the preventative the, nature of the... the... When the decisions were made and the changes occurred, it really was a push to reduce residential um, and hospitalizations, and that definitely has occurred and right. very significantly has occurred. And then just a, um, a strong belief that children will be will do better being connected to their community. So that is really the underpinning of right. all and, of it. And, and I do want to say, when you say hospitalizations, you're referring to psychiatric hospitalizations. Psychiatric hospitalizations, hospitalizations. hospitalizations. Yes. Um, yes. Because the presumption may be that unless interventions happen earlier in the process, hospitalizations 
will result because symptoms are being untreated? Is, is, is that the thinking? It, I think, that again, prior, it was just where the specialty was. And now we brought specialties back to our community. Right. So kids can stay with their families. Right, right. You know, I think that's the main piece. Kids can stay with their caregivers and not be removed and have that added trauma or challenge right. kind of in treating them away from their you, caregivers. You know, as you're aware, we sponsor a number of elder service, pro adult mm -hmm. services and elder services. And some of those are designed to keep people living in the community. Absolutely. And um, understandably so, the, 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 the connections that people have to their existing systems of support right. are greater than, and, and not to say that institutional care isn't needed. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, we talked last month with our friends from adult family care about this very subject. Um, and so that keeping that community uh, base is, is important for children as well as adults and elders and people at any age right. who have challenges. And we've uh, worked, you know, as a community service agency, part of our goal is also to um, build a great system of care around us. So right. um, we have many community partners as a community service agency that we refer to to help our families and, um, you know, really kind of look for diversity and um, specialties and and sure. that's it's rich now it's wonderful what's right. in the fall river the greater fall river community well for you've, you've anticipated my question what is your a, you know term used in the industry catchment area for the service you and your staff provide so uh, greater fall river fall river somerset swansea um freetown and westport and for those of you who are watching on stations that are beyond that geographic area, there are community service agencies available to you as well. Yeah. Um, and families can choose their community service agency. So we actually have a good number of families from right. other communities, such as New Bedford, Dartmouth. Um, they may have had an sure. experience with a provider here that they would like to continue. And, I see. Um, I see. That, again, is that voice and choice piece, which is really right, important. Right, yeah. We hear that a lot in the field now, voice and choice. Mm -hmm. It's a very, very important thing. Yeah. Um, and how many staff do you have, Sharon? We have... Um, I, uh, we have 17, um, 17 care coordinators, and we have 13 family partners. And then um, on the supervisory level, we have two senior care coordinators, which are the supervisors for the ICCs, the intensive care coordinators. We have two senior family partners, which supervise the family partners, and an assistant director. So it's a big Well, when you go program. see them, <laughs> tell them thank you for everything that they do. And thank you for doing the thank program. Thank you. Thank you're you. You're always It's willing. wonderful. It's a strength-based, it's really a great program to be well, part and it's, of. Well, and it's great for us yeah. to be able to showcase uh, that program and, and, and all the work that you do. It's, uh, it's always a great pleasure to do that. Sharon, thank you. Thank you. Sharon LaFleur, we thank you also for watching this edition of the program, and uh, we wish you well. And until next time, thank you very much, and thank you for watching Family Focus. Take care.